if you can just sink into that realization, it's like like the little voice in mind whispers, you don't have to even lift a finger. There are no have tos. There are no there are no times where God's inside saying you must. Must you must you must. You don't have to lift a finger. When he says I need do nothing, he means I need do nothing. No doing ever has to come out of a, a sense of need. If you're done through hmm, by the Spirit, what could be easier than that? You don't think the Spirit does it through you out of need. What does the Spirit need? Nothing. That's the, the, the message of you don't have to lift even a baby finger. It's an acceptance. And the doer just can't, is not in line with that simple acceptance. Grace is that it's, it's already done. Grace is, it's a free gift. Free. Free. No cost. In a practical way, what, you know, where is this all heading? It's just heading to you being the real you in this moment, being spontaneous, having a spontaneous life. Mm, that sounds pretty good. Instead of a rigid, ritualistic, segmented, structured, planned out life, just a spontaneous life. You can start to feel the energy of that. Hmm, if I started to suspend all of those future plans for a moment, just suspend them, say, okay, all right, God, all right, Holy Spirit, I'll give you a, I'll give you a crack there, I'll give you a shot, show me what you got. I'll suspend my future beliefs for, for a moment here, and you show me what it is, and then, yeah, that's what we call guidance and prompts. Come in to arrange your flights and they're already arranged. Better. <laughs> you said better than the ones. Better, cheaper. Cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus says in the Course, your problem is you still believe that you can, can control some aspects of your life. That's the problem. Some aspects. Some aspects you could say, I, I surrender them to you, Lord. I don't care what the outcome is. I give it over. You decide for me. Holy Spirit decide for God for me. I give them over. And then the belief that there's certain aspects that need to be controlled personally, individually, Oh, the Holy Spirit's too busy. He can't take care of uh, certain things. I can take care of those things individually. That's that's where the stuck point is. Where you think there's some aspects. And uh, you see that a lot where people seem to go through a period of relinquishment and they let go of a certain kind of control here, 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 here. But maybe they want to keep control of the bank account. Or maybe they want to keep control of the body image, of the body's weight. Or, you know, when they've done studies of anorexia and bulimia, when they've done those kind of studies, and researched it over and over and over, what they find when the researchers go deep enough underneath the anorexia and the bulimia, guess what it is? Control. The people that go through anorexic bulimia issues around their body, weight, they feel like a lack of control. 
in their life, and they're going to be damned if they're not going to control some aspect of the world. They may not feel like they can control their parents, the society, their life circumstances. They may feel like a victim of the world in all aspects, but they're damned if they're not going to control the, the weight, and therefore the, the bulimia, the overeating, or the anorexia, the refusal to eat. That's what the research shows. If there's a control issue going on underneath the surface issues, whatever the surface issues seem to be. That's what Jesus calls an authority problem. It's a control issue. Can I make myself the way I want to be, any way I want to be, or was I created by God? Perfect. Hmm. You start to realize it. It can't be both. If you don't accept the perfection of your spiritual creation, then that sends you off into time trying to do a better job than God. Make myself black, white, tall, short, fat, skinny, you know. When the mind starts to let go and let go and let go of a lot of aspects of this control, it still wants to maintain a sense of control because it wants to maintain a, a sense of Identity, individuality, there's no control in an abstraction, but I know uh, I use anorexia and bulimia, but another one is smoking. And when they do studies about on smoking and all the different aspects and they go down, and I've had this conversation many times, people start to let go and relinquish, relinquish, relinquish control of many, many aspects of what seems to be their life in this world. That cigarette is like, I'll be damned if I don't have control over smoking. <laughs> you know, like I'll choose whether to smoke or not. And that, they can call it whatever they want. It's not really, the nicotine isn't it. The nicotine really isn't the addiction, it's the control underneath in the subconscious mind wanting to be in charge of identity. That's where the, the issue is. And then this life gives you, the, this whole spiritual journey gives you the chance to let go, let go, let go of the control and then, this Malfrey's example shows so beautifully, watch how supremely, supremely taken care of you are. Supremely taken care of, not, okay, I'll get by. I'll get by with a little help from my friends, but we're talking supremely taken care of. If that is your only goal in life, is to, to be the peace of God, to be the light of the world, to shine the light, you will experience a sense of everything being taken care of. Jesus says that in the Course, not one seeming difficulty, but will melt away before you reach it. That's pretty well taken care of, before you reach it. That's the end of problem solving. You relinquish the control, and then you receive the grace. You, The prayer of your heart is to be happy, really, truly happy, not happy because of circumstances or outcomes, which is just the ego's trick, and those things pass away, that's not true happiness at all, they're gone, it's here and gone, like the sun burning away the, the, the dew and the mist, you know, that's so fleeting, but I mean, to truly pray for happiness is to really become accepting, to become desireless, you know, you you open your mind to grace and contentment, and then that's the answer. That's the answer to everything. It's very subtle on a spiritual journey because you you take steps and you start to feel that that care there, and the ego can't stand that that you absolutely have to do nothing, and you're completely taken care of. The ego cannot stand that. The ego always comes in with, uh, you gotta, you gotta work for it. 
Work, 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 work. You know. There's no work in heaven. Why do you think the forgiven world would be work? So, to, when you get into that ease of just being taken care of, being taken care of, well, it can feel, it feels a little more surreal when you get into that trust. It feels more like a fairy tale. I mean, I think, remember when we would always read the fairy tales and you know, I was saying, you know, you never, you never hear the concerns in the fairy tale, you know. Did you lock the door? How many times do you hear that in the fairy tale? <laughs> right in the middle of the dialogue of the fairy tale, did you, did you remember to turn the light off? Or did you remember to clean the kitchen? Or, you know, all the, the little, hundreds of little worrisome, little nigg niggling thoughts, you know, there's, they're never in the fairy tales. Fairy tales don't have those. They're eliminated from the fairy tales. And, and in one sense that's what happens. The more trusting you become in divine providence and divine grace, then your life seems more like a fairy tale. It can seem to some unbelievable. That's no life. You tell your life story, that's a fairy tale. Thank you, yes. <laughs> it does feel like that, yeah. Yes. Fairy tales can come true. It can happen to you. We're here for practical instruction. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm talking about fairy tales. It's funny that that which seems the most impractical to the world ends up being the most practical. Yep. Ease. Who ever told you that your life experience could be ease, divine ease? <laughs>